Pleased and proud to present the San Francisco Giants of the 1970s. And I am confident that the team will provide the baseball you Giant fans will want to see. Upon arriving in San Francisco the morning I took over, I had one definite thing in mind, and that was to let the players do their thing. I knew that they were all capable of playing big league ball, and I had a picture in my mind of the way they were successful getting to the big leagues. I therefore uh, spoke to each one, and having memorized uh, their great points, I more or less uh, sat and talked to them about uh, the different things that I thought were hindering their performance. And we got together on it, and most of them uh, were very receptive, and then we, we went from there. And did they go from there? After Charlie Fox took over the reins of the 1970 San Francisco Giants, they won 65 of 98 games, the best record of any team in the National League. Charlie's long career of developing young Major League talent started paying off in 1970, and one of the brightest dividends was rookie third baseman Alan Gallagher, a native San Franciscan. My baseball career started when I was two years old. My father and mother decided that I should become a baseball player and at that time handed me a strainer and a beach ball and decided that uh, I should play. Went to Mission High School, St. Paul's Grammar School, and St. Ignatius for one year high school. And I've dreamed of being a San Francisco Giant and I know that there has been no other ones from San Francisco. When I got to the ballpark opening day, my nervous tension had somewhat was somewhere and it just went somewhere. I don't know. I was relaxed. I just felt that I was going to have a good day. I said, told myself, I said, uh, you can do it, so don't worry about it. And then the first two times up, I went 0 for 2 and I was a little worried about it, so I went down underneath the clubhouse a little bit and said a little prayer and decided that uh, maybe I need a little help for my third time in bat. And on that third time at bat, Allen faced Larry Durker and got all the help he needed by landing his first major league hit into right, and he then scored his first run on Ken Henderson's double. Later in the day, Al came to the plate with a game tied, and he responded with a drive into the right field corner to plate the flying Bobby Bond. Al contributes to the Giants lineup with his hustle and courage and a great glove. There's never been a ball that I didn't think I could catch. There's been plenty I didn't catch. There's never been a ball that I thought I had no chance. Remember the name Alan Gallagher, a giant of the future. <laughs> Gaylord Perry, to me, is one of the finest competitive pitchers that I have ever seen. With his competitiveness, his bulldog in him, he rises to the occasion, he makes the great pitch, he'll strike the man out, or get the man hit the ground ball for the double play. Pitching is very important on getting ahead of the hitter. Make him hit your pitch. Uh, working behind hitters are very difficult for any pitcher. Being a good fielding pitcher is, I think, one of the most important things for a pitcher other than pitching. He can keep himself out of a lot of jams and just keep runners off in the bases so many times if he is a good fielder. There's a lot of practice involved, a lot of hard work, but it saves you maybe average of a season, uh, one to two hits per game you pitch. 
Gaylord, 328 and two-thirds innings pitch led the major leagues for the second straight year. The Iron Man of the League, Perry completed 23 games in 1970 and brought his lifetime record to 117 wins. The familiar sight of a Willie McCovey hand slap and of a smiling Gaylord Perry walking off the mound after a win makes giant fans happy. But there's always the next start and another challenge. Being a pitcher uh, in the regular rotation, so you're pitching every fourth day, there's a certain amount of things you do and don't do during the three days that you're not pitching. Like, okay, say you have a, a hard game. The next day, you loosen up a little bit. Don't do too much hard work. The second day is the day you do your hard running. They get your legs loosen up and stay in top condition. The third day is the day of relaxation, maybe only a couple of sprints, just to loosen the legs up, stretch the muscles out. And then the morning of the day you start, you usually, like myself, I have a, a good breakfast. Say it's a day game in Calistic Park, I come out, and I would say I'm a little harder to get along with the day of um, pitching because you, you got to be aggressive and you just got to make sure you don't give in to any of the hitters. So to do this, you kind of talk to yourself and being tough that day. Even the teammates, I'm sure that my teammates understand this. Day. It's the day that I pitch that I got to be tough out there to try to get a win. And did he ever get a big win in early September by beating the Houston Astros in Candlestick Park? The victory was the 20th for Gaylord, and he went on to win three more to post his finest record ever at 23 wins and 13 losses. How many wins, Gaylord? Two? No, Gaylord, 20. That's right. say as far as Marshall is concerned his pinpoint control and a great body anyone that racks his body with a wind up like Marshall has has to have great strength and stamina of course he, he, it's a very deceptive wind up and he's, God just blessed this fellow with great coordination to be able to wind up in this tight throw that like that high and still throw strikes and that's what makes him a great pitch other than the fact that he can throw any type of pitch over the plate for a strike. He has them all. Warren won one of the biggest games of his career by beating the Eastern Division champion Pittsburgh Pirates in late August. Well, the 200 wins mean a lot of things to me because uh, when I first started playing ball, when I was a kid, I never thought about Major League. I, I used to trade bubble gums card to the other kids. We used to have a lot of idols, you know, in the Major League, but I never thought about uh, I could have become a Major League ball player. But how mistaken he was about himself, as he's been winning Major League games since 1960. Juan came back from an early illness and a poor 3-9 midseason record to once again pitch great baseball down the stretch to win nine of his last ten decisions. Here he makes an off-balance Dave Cash ground out weekly. Juan had offensive help along the road to number 200. The catcher Dick Deets lined a single to right to drive in Tito Fuentes. the way. Juan made every pitch count as Roberto Clemente found out while hitting into a double play. Willie McCovey provided a big hit to send Kenny Henderson to third. Hold it up there, Kenny. So that Jim Hart could drive him in to add insurance to the Giants' lead. 
Juan shows what kind of a pitcher he is in this sequence with the Pirates' John Jeter at the plate. First a fastball, strike one. A tantalizing curve to set him up. What was that? That's strike two. A sidearm curve, ball two and two. Another fastball, strike three. One Marischal had won his 200th game. Kids are the lifeblood of baseball. Kids are the future of baseball. One of those who sometimes is referred to as a kid ball player is a young and talented outfielder who really came into his own in 1970, Kenny Henderson. I believe uh, 1970 uh, for Ken Henderson became a great year because of the fact that he finally realized that he had all the natural abilities that are needed to play in the big leagues. He knew he could hit there. He became a positive, aggressive hitter. I think that uh, this year I felt like I really belonged and uh, I've been playing every day. I've seen, I've seen my name in the lineup every day, so I just go out and try to do the best job I can. Yes, Ken did come of age last season. Often hitting behind Willard McCovey, Henderson's live bat from either side of the plate made the opposing pitchers think twice before deciding on the wisdom of walking Willie. Kenny's 88 RBI is attested to his timely hitting. He has mastered left field, right field, and center field, each position requiring a different technique. What are Henderson's theories? Uh, I really try to apply concentration to the to the game of baseball. I think it's a big part to, to concentrate. I think uh, when an outfielder's in the outfield, or whether he's hitting or base running, whatever he's doing, he's got to really put his mind to the problem at hand. And, uh, Concentration is a big key to set your mind up and do what you want to do. And a little ability helps too. Bobby Bonds is off and running. I love to run. I think this is a uh... This is something that I was gifted with, and I, I really love to do it. Any time that I can uh, get a jump, if my legs feel good, I will run. I know uh, days that I can run, days that I want to run, and days that I feel I can run. In 1970, Bobby continued to do all the things that were predicted he could do when he entered the big leagues, and he did them better than ever before. Bonds hit 303 and became the first giant in 13 seasons to collect 200 hits. He credits Charlie Fox for many of those hits. Well, my first year, I hit 323, and of course, the half year in Phoenix, I was hitting 370 when I called up. When I was called up, and Charlie kn knew how I did hold the bat in the days when I, when I was a 300 hitter. And uh, so he talked to me in Montreal one particular afternoon. He says, uh, why don't you try to hold the bat like you used to? I said, sure, I'll give it a try. So I went out that day and I had four for five. They had a pretty good day. But uh, it's not a different swing. I just got more of the bat. In other words, there's a, if you get over the end of the bat, the bat's still the same length, but actually you have, I would say, a half an inch more in your hand by getting over the knob. And uh, this is what I was doing. I was getting over the knob and really trying to whip the bat and uh, hit the ball out the park. Well, now I'm trying to hit the ball. Right field, center field, left field, just get on base. A line drive double into the left field corner gives Bobby three RBIs in this game against Houston. Bond should continue driving them in and hitting them out in 1971 as he gives the Giants a unique leadoff threat. A man who provides the spark of rallies with his speed and daring and a man who can resolve rallies with a long ball. There's only one of his kind of leadoff hitter and the Giants have him. With Henderson and Mays, Bonds gives the Giants one of the best defensive outfields ever assembled. Bobby can go left or right and in or back to catch balls from his right field position, and he can do the impossible. Candle 
little stick park, and many of these happy kids will swing the bat of their favorite catcher. Dick Dietz became a star in 1970 by hitting 303 with 22 home runs and 107 runs batted in. Well, I've been seeing the ball uh, pretty well all season long. It's, uh, it's just one of those things uh, when you when you do uh, when you're not seeing the ball, it means that you're pulling your head, and uh, when you do this, it, uh, most of the times you're overstriding. And uh, this is what I, I haven't been doing because I've been playing every day. Uh, Dick has always been, and always will be, as far as I'm concerned, a real strong right-handed hitter, one of the better right-handed hitters in the National League. The improvement of Dick Dietz is mainly uh, him getting more confidence in himself and the pitching staff and the Giants front office having more confidence that he can become a good catcher, and they know he's a good hitter, and... With him staying with him and even receiving confidence from them, he'll be a good receiver. 2-2 pitch, bounded to deep short. Lanier has a long throw. He bluffs the throw and got the Daniel picked up at third. Hart throws to Dietz. Dietz chasing him back to Lanier. Lanier chases him back now to throw it to Jerry Johnson. Johnson throws to Dietz. Dietz to Lanier. Lanier back to Johnson. Johnson chasing him down the line. Johnson to deep, and they tag him out. And that was a beauty. That was some kind of a run down. <laughs> There's no question about this. This is the complete ball player. He can do anything and everything on a ball field. That is required of a big leaguer. And do it better than anyone that has ever played it. In 1970, Willie bounced back from what for him was an off year in 1969. Willie had his best long ball and run production season in four years as he stroked 28 home runs and collected 83 RBIs. He was the maze of old as he came up with the big hit, the big run, the big catch. The Hall of Fame bound maze, that is if he ever retires, added luster to a series of records that staggers the imagination. The homers he added to his lifetime total, now standing at 628, keep him solidly in second place behind Babe Ruth. His 94 runs scored in 1970 give him a total of 1,921 and forecast a 2,000th run sometime in 1971. Woolley played in 139 games last year, a startling figure for a man 39 years young. But Willie Mays is not thinking of quitting as he goes on and on down the road to immortality and piles up record after record. In Atlanta, Mays began the last leg of a quest. Nine to go. Eight. Seven. Six, five, four, three, two. So the runner's ready to go. Martin sets. He throws to Mays. There's a long drive to deep right center field. Way back it goes, and tell it bye-bye, baby. Number 2,999 for Willie Mays. Before a huge crowd at Candlestick Park, Mays at the plate. Here's the wind up in the pitch. It fouls off his bat for a strike. He was falling away from the low inside pitch. Now the 0 1 delivery. Mays swings and pops it foul out of play. That's his first swing of the day. Wegener delivers. 
Mays hits it in the left field. Willie Mays has done it again. He has brought the baseball world to a standstill. With the league president, Charles Feeney, Hall of Famer Stan Musil and Carl Hubble, and Monty Irvin, who helped Mays at the start of his baseball career, all cheering him on. Here is the most feared hitter in baseball today. Willie Lee McCovey. getting a good ball to hit, number one. And uh, I'm basically what is known as a free swinger, although I really don't think I strike out as much as most free swingers. But my natural swing is a hard swing. And uh, I think in order to be successful as a hitter, you gotta go up there and you have to swing, you have to swing natural. And like I say, I, I usually just try to hit the ball good someplace and I feel that if I hit the ball good and hit it hard I feel the long ball will take care of itself when the giant comes to town, it's bye, bye, throughout the 13 year history of the San Francisco Giants National League fans have been treated to the continuing saga of Willie Mays the lustiness of a Willie McCovey swing the grace of a Juan Marichal windup, and the valor of Gaylord Perry. Bobby Bonds, Ken Henderson, Dick Dietz, all.